Welcome to the Speaker's Practice and our Friday Forum. Hi, I'm Adrian McLean, the founder of the Speaker's Practice. Welcome to Roland Hanekroot, our guest speaker for today. Hi, Roland. Hi, lovely to be here. Great to have you. The Friday Forum is for business people. I interview business professionals on all sorts of topics. The aim is that this forum is to discuss ideas and practical ways that you can use to promote your business, as well as hear real life examples of a wide variety of business tools. The Speaker's Practice offers practical and educational programs to develop presentation skills in the workplace. Our focus is on helping professionals to promote their business by using up-to-date promotional tools, especially in the area of speaking to groups on, or on video. The Business Speakers Forum, business professionals can bring along a presentation, practice it in front of an audience, get feedback and have time to network with other business entrepreneurs. The Speakers Training Camp is a presentation skills workshop which looks at every part of delivering a presentation. Our presentation and video program trains business people to present in front of a camera and create video. Now let me introduce our guest for today, Roland Hanigrop. Roland is the owner of the company New Perspectives. He has an extensive small to medium business background. Roland is the founder and CEO of two successful businesses in the building and construction industry with over 20 years experience. He originally trained as a journalist in Holland and worked for a national new daily newspaper in Amsterdam, then came to Australia and started a carpentry business and later a building company. Since leaving the building industry, Roland was involved in IT and network administration for a number of medium-sized organisations. Roland founded New Perspectives on his background and experience in small business, together with deep understanding and training in business management, psychology, counselling and coaching. The result is a unique approach and methodology that leads small business owners back to having more fun in business. Building a bit fun business that sustains you for years to come takes guts because it invariably means change. And that's change with a capital C. Nothing inspires Roland more than seeing people step out of their comfort zone and stay there in order to make the changes they need to make. I've been so looking forward to hearing your approaches, Roland. Thanks for being here. Mm. So Lovely. let's get started. Cool. Building a business and needing to go out of your comfort zone, some ways this seems sort of be opposites. What, what's this all about? Um, yeah. I, I, Fun in business and uh, and stepping out of your comfort zone might, might sound like um, um, sound, sound like a contradiction in terms, but it isn't because the fun in business I'm talking about is not um, getting drunk on Friday afternoon or having a ping pong table in uh, in your office. It's about making business itself fun, and to make business itself fun, um, you can't just do stuff the way you've always done it because if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you always uh, what you've always got. Um, so, to really create a fun business, a business that is fun itself, with a capital F, and that sustains you for years to go come, you um, you have to change what you're doing now, and that means you have to change who you are being. See, there's only one way that anything ever is going to happen. Is that, as I say, if you want what you've never had before, you've got to be someone you've never been before. And so that's where change comes from. And change can only happen outside your comfort zone. So if you want to have a business that, um, that is fun and sustains you for years to come, you will need to change. And change happens only outside your comfort zone. Does that make sense? I think when going into it, you may not realise what needs to change. No, half the time, of course, you won't know what, uh, what, 
needs to change. It's just something needs to change, and invariably, well, it'll be you. But um, but 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 what about you that has to change? And that's that. That's only something that can can become evident as you're going through the process of building the thing you want to build. Yeah. So that moves us really well into this next question about what are the stages to work through to create a fun business. Um. Well, there's actually seven, um, seven, seven steps or seven um, questions you've got to get clear about. And they they might, might sound like simple questions, and they are simple questions, so that the answers are anything but, uh, anything, um, anything but easy. They're not easy. Just because a question is simple doesn't mean that the answers are easy. But seven questions are, what are your personal values? You as the business owner, the business is going to be a reflection is, is a reflection of who you are. So it's got to start with your personal values, core personal values, the stuff that is most important in your life for you. Um, yeah. And the second question is about well, what 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 core beliefs do you hold about your industry? So I'm working with a beauty therapist at the moment, and her um, and she's got a salon in uh, in Paddington. And her core belief is that um, that um, beauty therapists need to become uh, need to g gain greater respect in the in, in in society because they're seen as little um, as little uh, unschool, unschooled, inexperienced um, little girlies who, who who are not to be taken serious. And 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 she's saying. Beauty therapy is a, is a is a profession like any other. It needs to be taken serious. So her core belief is around that. Um, yeah. Then you need to um, you need to you need to become clear about the question. What are you, what are you or do you, what do you, what do you want to strive to be the best in the world at? And when I say the world, that doesn't have to, that doesn't have to be the whole world. It can be your world. So the beauty therapist is um, best in, in the world, her world is Pennington in the eastern suburbs. She strives to be the best beauty therapist and the best groomer in, um, in, uh, in the eastern suburbs. And, um, and then um, the next question becomes, okay, well, if you know what you want to be the best in the world at, what are you absolutely passionate about? What would you do even if you didn't get paid for it? Um, what, what just gets you most excited? What gets you out of bed? And then when you've got that, the next question is, so how can I actually make a sustainable economic model out of that? How can I actually make profit out of that? So the whole thing about making profit doesn't happen, that, that question doesn't come along until you get to number five. So most people start the wrong way around. They start with making profit and, uh, you know, how can I make profit? And then they fit anything in and underneath that. But profit is an enabler. But anyway, there's there's a couple more questions that we I think is probably, we're probably going into too much detail if I keep going now. But there's yeah. um, but there the, it starts with that your personal values and your beliefs and your passions and uh, what you're absolutely committed to being the best in the world. Hmm. Yeah. Well, well, that's really interesting. It's people, uh, there's such a build up of information before you can really offer the products that you. It's not all about the product, is it? No, as a famous um, famous marketing guru said uh, in a book, he, he actually the title of the book is "People." Um, it's it's not what you sell; it's what you stand for. Uh, yeah. um, so it's not the product. There's lots of people that do that, that have the same kind of product. It's what you believe in and what you're passionate about and what you um, what you're absolutely committed to. That's what people care about when they buy stuff. Great advice. So, what about when building a tribe? What can be the challenges with that? And what do you approach? What's your approach to building tribe. a tribe and building your clients around you? So, with tribe, do you mean a referral network, or do you mean the people you hang out with, or do you mean your clients, or what, all of the above? Well, I suppose they're all part of your business, aren't they? So uh, initially the question's about the client base, yeah. but really it, it is about re the referrals are really important and and uh, 
and your support structure? Yeah. Well, I think, um, um, let me answer it this way. I think it's absolutely critical to, to have 100% clarity on who your clients are, who, who they are and who are not your clients. See, I'm, I'm very clear about who my clients are and who are not my clients and I can, I can assess that very quickly. So when, um, when I meet someone or when I'm referred to someone, I can very quickly decide whether this person is, a, is, a, is an appropriate client for me or not. And if they're not, then I'm not going to try and put a square peg in a round hole. I'm going to refer them to my network. I mean, I'm a, so I'm a business coach. And I work with small business owners to help them have more fun in, uh, in business and, and build businesses and sustain them for years to come. But I don't work with every business owner. Um, I don't work with every business. I only work with a very small subset of business owners in the world. A very small subset because I don't need to work. I mean, I'm only on my own, right? So, um, so I have a whole network, a tribe of other coaches around me that I know and, I, and, and that I feel confident in, in, about and that I trust. And I refer to them and they refer to me because, so if a, for example, if somebody, if somebody were listening to this webinar who's got a, an importing business, a, a wholesale importing business of stuff that they buy in China and they have a distribution channels all, uh, all through Australia and in the Asia Pacific and if they approached me, I would say, I would probably pass them on to someone else. I would refer them to someone else because there's someone else I know who is who works with those kind of people particularly and he really understands that. And mm -hmm. likewise, if that person gets an inquiry from an architect with the three or four people or five or six um, architects in his office, he doesn't know that business very well and so he passes that kind of stuff on to me. So he gives me a referral for that. And so mm -hmm. that's that, that that guy, that client, that, that that mate of mine, the other business coach that I'm talking to, if if I send him a referral, if this wholesale uh, wholesale importer person approaches me and says, um, "I'm interested to talk to you about um, about coaching," and I say, "Well, that's 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 great," and I could could work with you, but you know what? I actually know someone who's better for you, and I'll pass and I and I pass that referral on to my mate. That my mate doesn't even have to sell because that 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 guy will go will walk straight in saying, "Well, I was referred to you by your comp competition, so you must be bloody good." And vice versa, <laughs> the architect that comes to them, to my mate and gets referred to me, the it's just a phone call. The architect says, oh, you, you, "Your your competitor told me you're the best in the business to work with architects. Um, so when can we start? I don't have to sell anything anymore, right?" It's a it's, um, so that's so. I've got an enormous network of people that I, I refer to and refer back to me. And but I really understand their businesses, and they really understand mine. And we get the and so we can be very clear about how we support each other and how we don't compete. Because I, I there's very few people in the world that I compete with, to be honest, and and vice versa. And so I don't know if that answered your question really, but oh. It I, I, it certainly does. It, it's great to hear the dynamics about the referral process mm. because uh, people talk about giving referrals, but that, that was a beautiful example of how referrals really work. Yeah. Um, and it works for everybody. So Absolutely. if you give he, your coach business and he gives you business. Mm. It becomes a third-party endorsement then, right? So. Yes. If I tell you how how fantastic I am, then you go, oh yeah. But if um, if my friend tells you how good I am, then you're much more likely to believe that because it's yeah. a third party endorsement. But that's why networks Thank are you. and building them really well, building them, building your networks and your tribes on on uh, on trust and getting to understand each other and generosity is. Mm -hmm. I'm just as interesting. I'm just as interested to find a client for my mate, the one that I just talked about, as I am finding a client for myself because, yes. um, because I know he does the same for me. But when you were starting out, how did you start to get those mates around you, those, those referral partners yeah, around lots, you? Lots of networking. 
going to lots of networking events. I also I joined the I joined I joined something called BNI um, Business Network International. And for your listeners, if you're in small business and you want to build your networks, there literally is no better organisation in the world than BNI to do so. And I've been a I've been a member of a BNI a big BNI group in Sydney um, for uh, for over seven years now. We uh, and we meet every week, and that's that's the purpose we meet. We meet with about sixty people every week for breakfast, and we meet for no other reason than to learn to understand each other's business so that I can refer better to them, to them and they and they to me. So that's BNI is a great starting point. I mean, that's a plug for BNI. I'm not. I have no. I have no uh, no interest in BNI, but it's a great starting point to if you're building a business. It's a great starting point to uh, to um, to start building a really high value referral network. We'll move on to the next question. Hmm. Building a business can be frustrating. Need huge amounts of perseverance and be challenging. Yeah. What are your approaches to making it fun? Um, well, uh, there's a few few approaches. Um, one is to break the big, the big, the big overwhelming mountain of stuff down into small steps. I mean, people say people say, oh well, you know, um, you know, it's that old Chinese saying: a journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. And sure, that's true. But you've also got to do the second and the third and the fourth step, you know, and, and you've got to continue it on for a long time. So, working with someone like me is um, is all about uh, breaking the breaking the big journey up into lots of small steps, but making sure that you consistently take those small steps every week. So, what happens every time, and <clears throat> I see it all the time with clients that I work with, with but also with others with other people. The moment you break the overwhelming mountain of stuff down into small manageable steps and plonk it in a plan in a diary, that means that all this stuff you don't have to think about. About all you have to think about for tomorrow is um, doing this one thing because everything else is handled. So I often say um, it's the analogy is like say if you want to drive from Sydney to Broken Hill, and you go, oh my god, that's a long drive, <laughs> you know. Or you can, or you can go. Okay, well, I know I've got to go to Broken Hill, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm, all I'm going to do is I'm going to worry that I've got I'm, how I get to Penrith. Now, when I'm in Penrith, I know. So setting out a roadmap that says I'm going from Penrith to Lithgow, and then from Lithgow to Bathurst, and Bathurst to Orange, and Orange to Dubbo, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And so all you have to do is worry to get to Penrith. And then when you're in Penrith, all you have to do is worry about getting to Katoomba. As long as you've designed the plan well enough, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get to Broken Hill. Without having, without getting overwhelmed, and you're going to enjoy the journey. So that um, that that's that's a that's a big thing. It's breaking down the, the, the big journey into lots of small steps, and um, and then having a knowing that you're going to be held accountable to taking those steps consistently. And the other one is um, is uh, there's, there's a number of techniques I use to uh, help us cut through the overwhelm. Um, and focus on the stuff that is most most important right now. There's always every business owner has 10, 20, 100 things vying for their attention, priorities vying for their attention at any one time. And the secret is to um, to say, okay, well, we can't do all these hundred things today, right now. What is the most important thing that we can do today, literally? And then. Tomorrow we ask the same question: What's the most important thing we could do tomorrow? And again, it's the same small steps. But it's but it's 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 techniques to try and focus in what is actually most important. Mm. And um, and people people think they don't know, but they actually do. When you uh, when you create some calm space around around you, your brain is incredibly much more effective than you think at working out what is most important and how to move forward. So with the with the planning process, do you just sort of go somewhere for a couple of days and, and plan out your year or No, no, no. I, do, use much simpler, do, I use much simpler methods. When I'm when I start working with a client the first thing we do is we create a goal for a certain period of time, which may might be six months or a year or whatever. And that's that's one session. And then in the second session we create a plan for the first months, we just break that down into uh, into big milestones, 
month by month, mm -hmm. and that'll take an hour. Mm -hmm. And then we say, okay, well, right now it's uh, we've, we're in April now. We want to these are the milestones we need to achieve by the end of April. So what does that mean for next week? Let's break that down into the, into the action steps for next week. And then next week we go over right. So so it's it's very um, it's a, it's very it's very quick and easy. We don't have, you don't have, uh, it's different when you're working with teams. But I work with with single business owners. So um, if you're working with teams, then you have to get a whole team involved and, and all that sort of stuff, and that takes more time. But I work with small business owners who uh, have mm -hmm. a few employees or whatever, but they are on their own. They're there. They've got the, the levers in their hand, um, and they make all the decisions, and the buck stops with them. Yeah. Um, so you can be very very quick and very high level, and you don't have to be very formal about that stuff. With the mic. Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes if, it, if it's quick and, and immediate, uh, it's more creative. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah, yeah. No, I'm um, I'm a great fan of doing. <laughs> it might sound odd, but um, there's a saying that says perfection is the enemy enemy of completed. <laughs> um, you know. The, Wanting to get do things perfect means that nothing gets done. I'm a great I'm a great fan fan of the saying "close enough is good enough." Um, I know that that probably turns heaps of people off, but in my way of thinking, "close enough is good enough," especially in planning, because planning planning is guessing. Planning is always guessing. Guessing planning is always. Sitting where we are now, what do we guess is going to be? Uh, what, what is our best guess of what's going to happen in the next weeks, months, year, years? Right? And a plan is outdated the moment it's written because the world changes. You can't, you know. It, it, yeah. uh, I think it was um, one of the famous uh, generals. I'll, I'll, I'll say it was Napoleon, but it might have been someone else who said. Um, no battle plan ever survived the first contact with the enemy. It doesn't matter how good and how perfect you get your plan. The moment you meet the enemy, you know, the moment you meet real life, um, it, it's out of that. That doesn't mean you don't yeah. plan, but it means you can do. You can. You shouldn't spend too much time trying to get the plan perfect because that's just yeah. a waste of time. So to uh, continue on, what what are your approaches to making this all fun? Uh, what fun to make it fun? Well, actually, that people started their business usually because they are engaged and passionate about their business. So it is fun. The business is fun, but they forget mm -hmm. they forget because they get overwhelmed. So the process of uh, of, of 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 leading people out of overwhelm. That in itself starts making business fun. As long as you answer those, you know, those seven questions I mentioned before about as long as your business is aligned with your personal values and your beliefs and what you're passionate about and what you want to be best in the world at and what challenges you, as long as all of that happens, then business is fun. Because if fun, so I mean, I can assure you that for every client I've ever worked with, their most fun experiences in business have not been when they got drunk on a Friday afternoon. Their most fun experiences in business have been when they've achieved something specifically amazing in business. When, when, when they, their most fun experiences are when they get a letter from a client or a phone call or an email from a client saying, you know, um, oh, thank you so much for doing that. Uh, that, that, that works so, so well and trouble free and cleaning up after yourself or whatever. And, um, you you know, working with you has been a, has been a joy, as Jeff Anderson says. It's a joy to work with us. Um, or um, if um, or when when the, when they've landed a, a big contract that they've been working on to 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 do, to get for a long time, and they finally landed. That those kind of experiences are the most fun experiences you can ever have. Getting yeah. drunk on Friday afternoon is 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 is, is boring in comparison. Mm. You know what I mean? So so yes, uh, achieving a huge sorry, um, achieving a huge goal is uh, yeah, the yeah. best or, or, best or, thing. You know, simply uh, 
the mo- I remember when I was a builder, I mean, one of the most fun times I had when I was feeling most engaged and fun was when it was when the business was going so well and cash flow was working so well that I had enough cash in the, set aside in the bank so that when the tax bill came, I'd go, yep, I've got that sitting in the bank account. <laughs> you know, and I could just send the... It's such a, such a good feeling. Um, you, you know, so, so there's... Not that I want to pay more tax than anybody else, but you know, you, you know you're going to have to pay tax. If the tax bill comes and you, and, and you go, oh no, how, how am I going to find the money to pay for it? It's a terrible feeling. But if you've got the actually the money set aside, so you actually manage your business so well that you've just got the money for the tax bill set aside. It's just a fantastic feeling. So there's so many of these examples. When your staff are highly engaged and they're motivated and they're doing great stuff, that's fun. So <clears throat> that's real fun, fun, the fun that you remember. Yeah. And so that kind of fun is what I'm after, but that only starts, that can only start if you answer those seven questions that I said before. But when you answer those seven questions and then you have someone helping you out of the overwhelm that that that, 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 that can come with being a business owner, then it can't help but be fun. It literally can't help but be fun. It's, a, it's, it's just about automatic. Um, yeah. if you, it's like when all the ducks in a row, suddenly it becomes fun mm. again. Mm. Well, well, that's great advice. Thank you. So to finish, Roland, I asked all our guest speakers this. Yeah. What's your advice about promoting a business by speaking and using speaking as marketing strategy? Oh, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Um, it's, uh, there is no, I think there is no better... Um, no better technique for um, for for establishing your credibility uh, than speaking. If you're the if you're the person up the front of the room, people will see you as the authority. You will if you if you yeah if you and and if you get videos of that and you put it all over uh, all over YouTube, um, the more the more you can speak, the more. Um, the more you'll be seen as an authority and the go-to person. You're the person who, you, if you need to, if you're the one who's speaking about um, about how to renovate, uh, how to renovate um, uh, inner city uh, homes in, in in Paddington, then the person sitting in the audience with a with a terrace house in in, in Paddington will when they want to renovate their, their terrace house, come and talk to you, guaranteed. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, the speaking is, I think it's the, um, it's one of the most, well, if not the most powerful way to be able to establish your credibility. Oh, that's fantastic advice, thank you. Hmm. Then you've got a special offer, uh, Roland, would you like to just give that's a bit of detail about this. So I run um, uh, every fortnight, actually. Uh, I run a, a series of um, uh, webinars called the Small Business Masterminds Foundation webinars, um, and you see on your screen uh, www.smallbusinessmasterminds.com.au. There's lots more information. You can book in and register. Uh, the Small Business Masterminds Foundation webinars are free um, the for people who follow the link now out of, from this webinar that we're on at the moment. Um, there's three different topics. The one on the 24th of April will be about the purpose of business, the purpose of business and why you should care. Then two weeks later there's one uh, called fun in business or why fun in business is all that matters and the third one which will be after that again is about time management, how to become a time management ninja. So those three mm-hmm. topics that are the, are the Small Business Mastermind Foundation webinars and, um, and I'd, uh, I'd love all of you to um, follow that link, smallbusinessmasterminds.com.au and book in and register now. There's, uh, there's a video of me talking about, um, uh, about the topic. And there will also be there's actually there will also be a recording available there from a previous webinar, so you can have a look at what it's uh, what it's like. There's lots of resources with it. There's um, that come with it, free resources. There's uh, there's a there's a great comprehensive worksheet that you will be uh, that you will get when you come to the webinar, and um, 
um, yeah, so this um, it's it's there is no reason if you want to build a fun business that's that sustains you for years to come. There is simply no reason why you wouldn't come along. Of course. <laughs> well, Roland, thank you so much for your time today. It's been absolutely enlightening and you've got such a breadth of experience there. It's been just wonderful to hear your, your approaches and advice for business people. So thank you so much for your time. And thank you, Adrian. It's been really lovely talking to you in this format. Um, and um, I, hope, uh, I hope that uh, people find it useful. I've enjoyed it. Yes, I'm sure they do. Thank you very much. Let's Our next Friday forum is going to be on the 2nd of May and we're going to be speaking with Jenny Cartwright on the topic of cold calling and the importance of using the phone. Jenny is a specialist in tele-sales marketing so I'm sure she'll have lots of wonderful advice for helping small business owners to pick up that phone and to get onto their clients. And there's the phone going. <laughs> so, thanks, Roland. By the way, I know Jenny Cartwright. She's uh, she's phenomenal. She's a uh, she's a real specialist uh, on uh, in 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 cold calling and and tele sales. So you you would do you, yeah, you, yeah. you would absolutely get a lot of value out of that. But thank you so much again, Roland, for your time. Thank you. Pleasure.